Hey dudes, Dude the Builder here, and in this episode of Zig and Death, we're going to be talking about the hash map in Zig. A hash map is also known as an associative array or a map or a hash table in other languages. And it basically uh, is a data structure that lets you map from one value to another. And it uses a really efficient uh, algorithm uh, that allows uh, fast lookups no matter what the size of the map is. So you may have a lot of entries in the map, but the lookup is, go is still going to be really fast. It does this by using a hashing algorithm, which basically turns a value into a number. And when it has to do a lookup, it just uh, has to compare numbers, which is uh, done very fast by computers. So let's uh, take a look at how Zig implements its hash map in the standard library. Um, we're going to be seeing, uh, as usual, uh, a little contrived here example. But I just wanted to demonstrate some of the, the most important features of the hash map and uh, a little uh, important detail about memory management when, when you're dealing with a hash map. So uh, first of all, we have this user struct here. And I'm pointing out here in the comment that this uh, user struct will be allocating uh, memory to hold the email field here, which is a slice of U8. Um, this is, uh, as I said, it's, it's, it's total overkill for, for such a simple little structure and, and with, with a, a field. But I wanted to emphasize this uh, issue about memory management in, in, in the hash map. So we have a typical init function here, taking an allocator, um, the ID and the email. And uh, here is the important part where we, do, we use allocator.dupe to uh, copy the bytes from the passed in slice of const u8, the email, which is a slice of const u8 into the email field of this uh, new user that we're creating. And then we have the dinit method, um, which will uh, free using our stored uh, copy of the allocator, calling its free method on that email field. Okay. Next up, we're going to have uh, this uh, user data struct, which is going to be like a little database we're going to have for users. and it basically only has one field. It's it's just like a wrapper around a stud auto hash map of u size to user. Okay, so here is where we see how we can create uh, a standard hash map in Zig by using this auto hash map uh, generic function from the standard library, and it's called auto hash map because. It will automatic, automatically uh, generate and use the proper equality and hashing functions uh, for the key that the, t the key type that you specify. So here it's a u size, so it'll use the proper hashing function for u size and equality for u size. Okay, it does that uh, that automatically at compile time. Okay. Um, here we have uh, an init function for this uh, user data struct and what we do is we uh, create here an instance of the auto hash map with its uh, init method here and passing in an allocator and in the dinit method we simply call dinit on the map okay now we're going to have some functions that basically are the wrapped interface to the methods of the hash map. Uh, we need to add items to the map, so we're defining here a put method, which is going to take uh, a user, because we are using the ID field of the user itself as the key, uh, the keys for our map. And we just need uh, the user. Um, we don't need a separate uh, parameter here for for the ID. And then we use the maps put method to then specify the, the key and the value. The key is indeed the ID field of the user and the value is the user itself. Here we have a wrapper around the get uh, method of the map, which takes a key. In this case, it's the ID and it's going to be returning an optional value. So if uh, the map contains that key, it'll return the user. If it doesn't, it'll return null. And here we have a demonstration of how we can remove items from a map 
um, and as is the case in other languages you can call this uh, remove method here I'm using fetch remove because we want to uh, obtain th the entry that we are removing from the map um, so that we can then return that in this uh, del method we're defining here but you can call these uh, uh, the different remove methods on the map you can call them um, on a key that doesn't exist in the map that's not an error what's going to happen is it's just simply going to return null okay so uh, null or false because there are other methods that that just indicate if the if the entry was removed or not but in this case we want to return the removed user so that's why we are using fetch remove okay now here in main, we first, uh, once again, define an instance of our allocator or using our old friend, the general purpose allocator. We create here the instance of our user data, okay? And uh, handle uh, freeing the resources here with the init. And then we're gonna add some users to that user data uh, store uh, here. Uh, first we create uh, a user Jeff we make sure to call the init on Jeff and this is important because uh, you may be wondering well if I am deinitializing here the map itself and the map contains these users that we're adding here um, doesn't this deinit uh, uh, free the resources from these uh, users and the answer is no the map does not uh, uh, handle any allocations that occur outside of it so um, if you have uh, any type of data that needs uh, cleanup uh, as in this case the, the the user struct that we defined uh, up above um, and you're putting them in a hash map you have to uh, also aside from the initializing the hash map you have to take care of cleaning up those uh, uh, individual uh, data items uh, themselves okay that's a really important aspect of dealing with a hash map and this would apply also to the keys it's not only specific to the values if the keys are a data type that also allocates memory then you would have to also uh, handle the freeing of those uh, resources for the keys also okay so here we uh, create Jeff and we add it we create Alice we create Bob and we add it okay and then we use our uh, get method to uh, basically do the test here if we do have this uh, ID we capture that user and we print out the information okay and we do that for the three users we just added now here we have a uh, demonstration of deleting okay and then we pr practically make a test once more to see if we get any output here we have a, a demonstration of the count method on a map which will tell us how many entries have been stored in the map and there's also a contains method which will test if a key is contained inside the map and uh, here's an, an example of iterating over the entries of a map you can call the iterator method and it will return an iterator over, an, over the entries an entry of a map uh, has uh, uh, the key and the value, but you can also uh, obtain iterators for just the keys or just the values, okay? Um, I'm gonna put a link in the description to the source of the hash map and the standard library, and you're gonna see all those methods there where, where you, can, you can check out all the different iterators that are at your disposal. Um, here we're iterating over the entries and we are printing out precisely uh, by using by by means of the key putter and the value putter um, which uh, indicate that it, uh, you're actually obtaining pointers to the key and a pointer to the value okay um, in each entry here we have a demonstration of a method that it's called get or put and get or put basically what it does is it lets you um, check if a key exists in the map and if it doesn't it'll insert it immediately and what you return what what you, what you get in return is it's it's what's known as a get or put result I, the, I'm using here this variable GOPR 
and the getter put result has a field that's a, a boolean field that's that's called found existing if found existing is true it means that the get was successful and that key existed in the map but if it's false it means that the key didn't exist in the map and it was inserted a, a new entry was created uh, with the key that you uh, passed in to this method and uh, you have then in the GOPR the, the getter put result you have the value putter which is a pointer to the value which will be undefined and you have to set it okay and here we're setting it to Bob which was the, the entry that we deleted uh, previously and then we verify that now we do once again the map contains Bob and we can print out the information for that entry next up we're going to see uh, as in other languages uh, in Zig if you ever need a set what's known as a set which is basically uh, a list of items where they have to be unique you don't want any repetition of items you can do that with the hash map by setting the value type to void okay uh, and by setting the value type to void this is a specialized version of the hash map which will take up much less space and have much uh, less work to do because you are indicating at compile time that this hash map doesn't need values it, it, it you only need the keys so um, in, 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 in this case uh, what we're gonna do to test out this functionality is we're gonna add here some numbers and uh, we're gonna repeat so here we add the 7 twice and we add the 5 twice and then uh, we use the count method to see how many entries we have after adding uh, these four uh, four attempts to insert into the map and then we test if the map contains the five okay so let's uh, execute this to see what we have and as you can see here uh, in, in, indeed it says that the primes map only has two entries even though we inserted four times and it does have the five inside okay and here we have the output for all the previous uh, debug print uh, instances that, that we have in the program. So as you can see, the hash mapping zig is uh, a really straightforward data structure, pretty much the, the same behavior that you will find in other languages that have uh, hash maps or, or hash tables. But um, uh, as you can see in the source code in the standard library, you can make uh, other more advanced uses of the hash map. You can define your own uh, hashing functions, equality functions. You can even have ad what's what's known as adapted uh, keys. So maybe a um, situation where the key is of one type, but um, the actual um, uh, keys that you're using in the program is of another type. And you can establish those relationships between types when you're looking up uh, keys in the map. So basically, it's it's really powerful, really flexible. Um, but it is an advanced topic that maybe in the future uh, we can we can look further into that. Uh, but for now, this is basically the uh, essence uh, when using a hash map. Remember that if uh, you're storing either keys or values that need cleanup, like we demonstrated here. You will have to do that uh, aside from cleaning up the map itself, okay? So, um, I hope you find this uh, useful. Do the builder here. I'll see you in the next one.